Okay, so some initial Geekbench 6 numbers have been released for the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5. This is running on a Qualcomm reference device. It's a device that Qualcomm builds to help its partners bring their smartphones quickly to the market, also as a proof of concept. So of course there are things to consider here like thermals, battery life, screen size, and so on. So this is a reference device, not a consumer device. But the numbers we've got are 3,824 for single core and 12,396 for multi-core. So how does that compare to the recently released iPhone 17? Well, there are quite a few different models of the iPhone 17. There's the A19 processor and the A19 Pro processor. But for single core, they go down from about 3,630 up to about 3,815. So the iPhone 17 Pro, maybe the 17 Pro Max, seem to have very, very close single core scores to the uh, Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5. However, the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 does come out on top. Uh, and then for multi-core, well, it just blows all the others away. You're looking at 9,200 up to around 9,800, not quite breaking the 10,000 uh, barrier in most tests, but the uh, Qualcomm is actually 12,000. So quite significantly different couple of things to mention. One is, of course, that the iPhone is a hexa-core device with six cores in it. The Qualcomm is an octa-core device. So, of course, you are going to get better performance when there are more cores. So that's obvious. And the second thing, of course, is that if you go and look up the different Geekbench scores, then they're going to vary quite wildly. Different people just doing their tests. Sometimes the device is cool. Sometimes the device isn't cool. Sometimes they're kind of artificially cooling it. You know, all this kind of stuff. So there is a wide range of different scores. But I've tried to look at the average across as many different scores as I can find. And these are the numbers. Love to hear your thoughts. What are your thoughts about the new Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5? Do let me know in the comments below.